Here's our molecule again. It's over on the, on the left. Very simple structure, and I've simulated this uh, spectrum at a frequency of 400 megahertz. And I want to zoom in on just one of these peaks, and we're going to analyze it using this idea of coupling constants. So let's click and drag. Here's a triplet that we're going to look at more closely. And I'm going to make it a little bigger, use a wheel to make that a little taller. And I, I want to write on this spectrum, so I, I need to switch to a different view. Okay, so here's our spectrum. Now, as it turns out, this is a triplet, and it has the classic one, whoops, I didn't want to pick that up, one to two to one ratio. It's a very nicely formed triplet. Okay. Now, as it turns out, we, can we need to be able to describe the distance between our peaks. Whoops, made that too long. Um, and so we need to figure out the exact position of this peak. And I looked at this very closely by eye, and my best guess is that this peak, this leftmost peak of our triplet, is at 2.4255, and our x value, x axis is in ppm. And I felt the best value for this is about 2.407 ppm. And I thought this value was right about 2.3885 ppm. Now, as it turns out, the distance between these two peaks is we simply separate uh, or, or subtract 2.4255, take away 2.407, and we get a difference of 0 0.0185 ppm. And as it just so happens, this distance is also the same value, 0 0.0185 ppm. Great. Now, as it turns out, if your NMR has a different field strength, your magnet has a different magnet strength, then these, these distances can vary. And we saw that. The higher the field strength, the more these ends of the triplet are going to compress in towards the middle. However, if we measure this distance in hertz, that distance doesn't change from one spectrum to the other. And so this is what we get in we, our coupling values. Coupling determines the multiplicity. Is it a doublet, triplet? Um, quartet, etc. And the distance between these peaks in hertz is constant. So we refer to these as coupling constants. So we need this distance not in ppm, but in hertz. Oh, holy smokes. How do we get hertz? Well, we know that we acquired this, we simulated the spectrum in a 400 megahertz instrument. And a 400 megahertz instrument means 400 hertz per one ppm. So if we multiply this difference by this correction factor, 400 hertz per ppm, what we get is a value of 7.4 hertz. Coupling constants are sometimes referred to as J values, and the J value for this particular triplet is 7.4 hertz. So we'd say the J for this peak, this triplet, is 7.4 hertz. Now that separation between the, the, the different peaks in this triplet will be the same no matter what our spectrometer is. So this is a way to report, if I report J values on my different peaks, my triplets and my doublets and my quartets, then these J values will be the same. And it's a way to report, here's what my um, spectrum looks like. I got a triplet. The triplet should have a J value of 7.4. If you make the same molecule and you take the NMR, you should also get a triplet with a J value of 7.4 hertz. So this is a very characteristic value that relates to the properties of the molecules we make. It's a very useful way to communicate structural features when we talk about NMR data. And I want to stop this, and I can't figure out how to stop. I'll tell you what I use my stylus.